Welcome everyone to the most amazing content ever, which is the RC300, one of the best loop pedals on the market. Absolutely, no, I'm kidding. Best loop pedal on the market, right here. Bang, bada bing, boom, boom. Ed Sheeran Looper X. But for our squad that has the RC300, this is for you. Um, this is a loop pedal that I used for all my streams, for all my gigs. Um, I still use it for gigs right now because I haven't bought another Looper X. I can't afford another one yet. Um, this Looper X was gifted to us by our community who are super amazing. You can see their names on the plaque just there. They're all the donators. Um, but yeah, so I still use this for all my gigs uh, because I'm not too fussy when it comes to uh, like my pub gig sound. But uh, it's very useful. It's great. It has um, multi-tracking, so it's definitely going to give you a lot of arrangement abilities. Uh, it's going to make you pull off like some really, really cool songs. Uh, people will engage, and they'll love what you're doing. Um, so it's very, very cool. Um, but we're going to go through some admin uh, real quick um, of how this pedal works before we get into like actually jumping, jumping in and playing. But essentially what we've got here is there's a couple of settings that are pretty important. Um, for starters, uh, you want to turn this thing on and off. This is the power button right here. So when, well, I'm about to turn this on, I've already done this before. So it depends if you got the second, if you got the second hand or potentially you, this was like a display model at the store, it might be set up whack or like weird things being, do, been done to it. So what I recommend you do is you push the right and the exit button to write, like as in how to write. So you'll see it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go work these, work my magic down here. So I'm gonna push the right button, exit button, push the power button on, make sure it was off beforehand. See, factory reset system and memory. We're gonna go right, and that will reset the whole thing. So if you do that, we are now all on the same page because there's a couple of wank, like really, really wonky things that people will do with their settings that they customize because you can customize these things quite a quite a lot. Um, and, uh, but I never really cared for that kind of stuff. Now, once this finishes, uh, while we let it do the factory reset, um, basically let's just plug in the, the, all the stuff that needs to get plugged in. So I need to pre-sure. Okay. Yeah, cool. This is my input. So this is going to go into, you've got your main output, which is over here, mono left and right. And then you've got your main, uh, input. So that's where your guitar is going to go. So I plug in. This is into my system. You just heard that. I'm super sorry. Uh, and then the left and right mono, that's where my guitar is going to go. So I plug my guitar in. Now, they do have a microphone input up here. So you can see there, it has a mic. It's an XLR input for your microphone. That's to be like beatboxing or you can even use this. Like some people actually use this as a mixer. I don't know why. You're actually crazy if you do that. Um, but, uh, or you just can't afford it, an actual mixer. I'm really sorry, but... Yeah, it would sound like garbage, uh, like hot garbage. Now we're gonna turn this off and uh, turn it back on once it's completed. Now, the other things that we have on here that are like pretty important, um, you wanna figure out the levels that you have that you need. Now, the input level, so this has like its own preamp thing that it can do. So it has an aux input as well if you wanted to plug in, but. Um, you see over here, there's an aux input as well next to the mono where I connect. Always connect in mono for your for your instruments if you're trying to do that, unless you have like a stereo piano, but anyway. Um, you will set up the level for your instrument. Um, the way you're going to set up your level is you're going to play till it goes red. See red? That means it's peaking. Red. Only a little, if it just hits like a little bit of red, it's good. Like, like, it only very rarely comes in if I hit really hard. So you're not gonna be playing like that all the time and you don't want it to be super, super low and quiet. Uh, now where's the guitar pick? Um, then you have the master level. So whatever's coming into the, the pedal uh, will be adjust through that gain knob. Um, that'll be the same thing through your microphone. Whatever's coming through your microphone signal, you'll adjust the gain on the microphone and the aux as well. So that, that input level, you just want to go where the peak is and then pull back. Um, 
And then the other thing that's important is it does have a master level on it on the far left. So this is the output of everything that's coming in. So your guitar playing, your loop, your tracks, every, every single thing that's coming out of this is coming out of that master level right here. Boom. Now, that's where you're going to like figure out how you want your stuff to go. Um, there's a concept called gain staging, which is like the different volumes that pe things come in. Um, this is where you can be a bit creative with the sound, but if you're a beginner, do not worry about that. Just make sure it's not peaking and distorting, and then you start figuring out what you want to do from there. Now, as you can see, we have three tracks. What? We have track one, we have track two, we have track three. Now, what's going to happen with this is you can record on one track. So I'm going to put my headphones on so I can actually hear myself. So we've got, so I've got my guitar playing. You can hear it nice and clear. Now on an RC300, this is my workflow. So you can do anything you want. You have complete control over this. The way I set my stuff up is vocal tracks, any like vocal harmonies or anything like that would always go to track three. Um, that's if I had a microphone plugged in. I don't have a microphone plugged in. If I'm gigging, I actually don't have a microphone plugged in. I just use two tracks. But the ability to I isolate the two is very, very cool. Um, track two is where I put all my guitar stuff. So that'll be my guitar chords, all the harmony embellishments, any like fills or anything cool. We'll go on track two. Track one is the beat, um, which I, I would either beatbox on it or I would slap the guitar or smack it. Um, and then the bass. So if I was going to go track a song, I would do it like this. I would hit the record on track two to build my chord progression. So I go hit the record button, which would be like. Now, something that you would have noticed is different here to the RC30 is when I recorded and I, you would have seen me accidentally do it on the RC30, but typically um, these loop pedals will just do an overwrite sequence. So once you record, they automatically overdub, um, which is the way you would want to do it if you're getting really into the flow. I said in the RC30 video, do not focus on that because it's a more, like you need to be more comfortable with looping to do that. Um, otherwise, you might get wild because you don't want to make mistakes. Um, so when I go into looping, especially if you're a beginner, just think one layer at a time. If you want to be fancy and you want to knock everything out in one go, that's totally fine. But I recommend that you do one layer at a time because you want to make sure you get each layer at the beginning. And then as you get more, like you're going to find that as you're a beginner, you're going to make a mistake. And then if you go to clear that one layer to do the undo, undo function, um, it will clear everything that's been recorded in that one moment. And that is like the most heartbreaking thing when you layer like multiple really amazing layers and you're like, I've got all these harmonies down, blah, blah, blah. And then you go and you fuck up one and it ruins the whole thing. And then you have to, instead of being able to undo it and just undo that one that sucked, it just undoes the whole thing. Uh, so being able to compartmentalize your loops is very, very handy. So don't, don't, um, don't think that you need to be overdubbing all the time. It's not, it's not a necessity when it comes to looping. Take your time. Do it right. Learn correctly. Um, so anyway, I record. Now if I want to play it back, I push play and it works. So if it's green, you can see it's recording. Now I hit the stop button, turns it off. Now if I hold the play button, and so, so I go to record again, so I'm going to tap the record, tap, this is play and record. So if it's playing and then I tap it again, I can now record over it. So a bit. Uh, one, two, three, oh. So you can see I have that. Now, if I really wanted to, and I was like, oh, that one sucked. I could hold the play button and it will undo what I just recorded. So you saw that? I just undid that. Great. Now, if I want to clear that track because I'm like, I'm over it, I just hold down the stop button. Boom. Cleared it. Done. 
So that's why this one's very, very cool. Um, so I'm going to just build a track, a loop. Uh, and if you are familiar with the RC30 video, um, you're going to be wondering, like, there's these faders on the left right there. So those faders, that's how you're going to mix your tracks. Um, and I said in the RC30 video, if I'm just doing bass and drums, I will have that boosted pretty high because I want that to cut through in the mix. Uh, and then I, want, I don't want my guitar harmonies to fuck with whatever I'm doing on the guitar. I want it to sit just below or exactly even. Um, so that's why that will sit at the middle. So if you're wondering, yes, balance your mix. That's a, a huge thing to figure out. Um, and it's completely subjective. Uh, I can't tell you how to do things. This is how I did it. I boost the, the drum and bass track and I keep the guitar track the same. And then the vocal track, I kind of mix, but I never really used the RC300 much for vocals. Um, I only started getting really heavy into vocal looping when I had the Looper X because honestly, this thing sucks when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and I didn't want to spend extra money on vocal processes. That's just me. Just my two cents. Uh, but this, but yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, so that's what's going to happen. Now, remember um, that everything that comes out of the RC300 is one signal. So whatever you set up in the mix, so whatever effects you bring into the pedal, um, every single thing is coming through whatever channel that you're sending the RC300 into. Um, there's no changing you can't separate the bass and drums and have a good mix for a bass and drum or a good mix for a guitar. It's like you got to make them all work together, and that is so annoying, and I hated it. I mean, you guys have seen me in my stream. I hated it so much, but we persevered, and then magically Ed Sheeran was like, hey, good luck. Here's the Looper X, and I was like, oh, my God, you done changed my life, man, because I did not want to buy a head rush pedal. Um now, say we go into this RC300 and we're about to vibe out on it. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to build the tracks how I would normally build them at a show. Um, so I'm going to build the guitar track first, which will be track two. And then I'm going to add the bass and the drums on track one. And I'm going to show you how I would use this for arrangement. So all the initial setup you should be pretty comfortable with. Um, now, this part is where we're going to get musical with it. So I'm going to record the song. I've got... Bass, drums, right? So I've got my drums and I've got my bass and now I'm going to add some more guitar fills. So I'm pretty comfortable with this. This is a pretty crazy one. So now you can see I have two tracks going right now. So track one, track two. I can turn them off individually or I can turn them all off at once. Holding the, this button doesn't do shit, which is a huge oversight of, uh, of Boss. And uh, I don't know why. Maybe they have a smart reason why that they didn't make it that if you hold down this freaking button, it clears the whole fucking track. Um, I remember watching people like Carl Walkner be like, this is how we can work it. You know, he had a button that he would push and it would swap and delete everything. <laughs> he was just like swapping through different like channels. Um, and that was what was allowing him to, to quickly move through and clear all his loops. I was like, oh my God, uh, the things we do to navigate this RC300, um, that is just like such a simple thing. Just hold and turn. Anyway, it doesn't do it. So I'm sorry. Um, so it just turns everything on, turns everything off. Now, when you're, when you're arranging and doing whatever you want to do, figure out whatever flow that you have. So say for instance, I just recorded my loops and I'm about to get into the song. What I'll do is I'll drop the guitar. Club is in the best place to find a lover, so the bar is. So I do like a gradual peel. So like halfway through, I take the guitar out. Da, 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 da. Best place to find, and then I, and then everything's out. Um, alternatively, it works like this. Love is in the best place to find the lover. So you can see how that has a nice little effect of me jumping into the song. Um, 
That is something you definitely cannot do with an RC30 or a single track looper. That's why we multi-track. It's a very subtle, subtle nuance that happens. Uh, that it is going to enrich. It's going to add like a little oomph in each section that you go for. Um, the other beauty of this is once I've built that whole track and I'm getting to the chorus and I'm like boom. I'm in love. <laughs> And then so I get through that chorus, and then I go like, and now you can see I'm just using track one. Easy. Um, that's what multi-tracking looping is all about. So everything that you saw that I used on the Sheeran Looper Plus, it's exactly the same, except that the on and off buttons are here, and they have their own track, and then you can turn everything all on at once if you want. Um, and the only other thing that this has that is like you just got to get used to is um, is once you finish your song, I will always just go hold stop, clears, hold stop, clears. So usually like in between my songs, typically I won't go back to back on looping songs. Um, I just find that as a cadence when you're performing in a gig, uh, it's not very useful, but <laughs> I'm giving you guys references for gigging. Uh, this is like, if you're just in your bedroom doing your own thing, <laughs> do whatever you want. Like just turn it off, swap it, whatever, whatever it takes for you to clear the tracks, clear the tracks. But that's how I clear tracks. Um, I would track them and then I just hold the stop button, clear the track, hold the stop button, clear the track. And then I move on to the next song. Um, or as I'm talking about what the next song is, I'm like standing there clearing loops. Um, you can buy an alternative pedal that you can swap like Carl Walkner did back in the day when he used this pedal. But really... And that's it. Um, so that is what the RC300 is all about. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it. I wasn't going to talk about it because I feel like it's a bit redundant. But um, look, when it comes to mastering your tone, actually, no, we'll do it. I'll do one more video. I'm, I'm going to do another video and I'll talk about it because then I can pull up like my pedals and give you like context on what's going on. So that will, that'll make a bit more sense for you guys. All right. But RC300, that's how it works. Shout out to um, people in our, in our community that have got this pedal and really wanted this video. But uh, hopefully this brings you value and you know how to use it. Please um, don't be afraid to use this thing. Uh, I know I don't like, I'm not super excited about it because I got my shiny new toy. And like how I was talking about like video games, like the RC30 is like that blue rare bow that you get. And you're like, oh my God, this is so good. And then the RC300 is like, you know, when you hit the max level and you get like your first piece of equipment that's good and you can use an end game. That's what this thing is. And then obviously the Sheeran Looper Plus is like legendary weapon. So uh, that's kind of like how I see this. And hopefully that analogy serves a few of you that may have played a video game or know a bit about like getting cool stuff in a video game. But that's all this really is. So it is fantastic, but it does require things that are going to make it sound good. So I'll make another video. I wasn't going to, but I'm just going to make another video uh, more just focused on that because some people already know how to use these pedals and I'll just make the video for you guys. All right. See you guys in the next one. Let's go.